This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome to AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. I'm Liz Gill, and I'm with the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, ASE certified. Hello, Allison. Hey, Liz. Today, this is Think Radio. Think Radio. And whether or not I apply this knowledge, I will have it so I will be a more informed car owner. Because today we're going to talk about transmission fluid in between your vehicle repair questions. I, I, I don't know anything about transmission fluid. Yeah, most don't. I understand that. Do I need to check it? Can I check it? Yeah. Okay. Right. I have I Good have question. a manual transmission car and a automatic transmission van. Do they have the same transmission fluid? No, it's it's a little different. You can well for standard. I recommend using a really good fluid. I don't fool with those as much, but for automatic transmission, there is so many different kinds. It's it's kind of crazy. But do they both have a dipstick? Yes. Okay. So you can check that. Um, some standards don't. Some automatic transmissions don't these days. Okay. So that's kind of weird. Uh, they stopped using dipsticks in a lot of them, which I personally do not like at all because I like the idea of being able to check your fluid and know what condition it's in from the top of the hood. The only other way to check it is from under the car when they don't have a dipstick. It makes it more difficult. I think they've started getting away from that a little bit. So some of your newer vehicles have dipsticks again, but, but there's quite a few out there that don't. And personally, I'm a, here is my car. I will pay you money to take care of my car rather than I, I do it myself. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's, you know, does, yeah. does each their own. So when... When do you change transmission fluid? It's usually you change it every 50,000 miles. That's just a good number to go by for all vehicles. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what can, like if you tow or not, or if you drive on, on dirty roads, you might want to change it a little more if you do that a little more frequently. But uh, every car is 50,000. They've got some fluids. They'll tell you that you don't ever change it. Um, that's not true. And they would, every say that in, changed. they would say that in their owner's in the owner's manual or just a mechanic might say that? The yeah, owner's manual will say, I'll give you a, a, for instance, when I worked at Toyota, the owner's manual didn't say to replace it unless you towed or drove on dirty roads at 60,000 for some Toyota fluid. They, they all say a different inter interval. I say 50,000 to just make it simple. But. <laughs> but if you drove on dirty roads or towed, it said replace it at 60,000 miles. It just said check it at 60,000. Um, that is where I, I really differ with what they say on that. The, every fluid in your car needs replaced at some point. There's no fluid that lasts forever. And so I, I, I disagree with that. I always feel like you should um, at least do what I call a drain and fill. And that'll get at least half of your fluid clean. And, and that's really easy for anyone to do. It's basically the same as the old change. One thing I did look up in preparation for this show, because I'm a girl and I like color, there's different colors. And I love that it, the fluids in cars, they have them so that the fluids are different colors. So you know what's right. coolant and what's transmission fluid. But yeah. then there's different it, when you check your transmission fluid, there's different colors, and it can tell you different things. Yeah. Well, it's basically, most of it's red, and if it's starting to get blackish, use your past due on a fluid change. It'll be like um, a see-through red color. It should be clearish red, and that's what color most all transmission fluid is for, for most vehicles. So if it's dri if that's on your patio or your, your carport, then you know that's what's what's leaking. Right. Then you have a leak. Now, do you ever need to top it off? And if you top it off, does that mean you have a leak? That means you have a leak. So it's a closed system. You should not be losing fluid. Um, very little will condense and, and, and turn into water. So you definitely... Um, 
need to know what level you're supposed to be at. And that's another thing, knowing how to check your transmission fluid. It's different than engine oil. Engine oil, you check when the engine's cold and all the fluid has hit the bottom of the pan with it level. On transmission fluid, it needs to be warmed up and driven a little bit and gone through the gears, and then you park it. Some of them, like the Kia I worked on this week, you put it in neutral, and you check it in idle, and then you check your dipstick, and it has the hot marks on there, and you, you want it in there. So there, there can be a little bit of difference in how you check it. Just read your owner's manual on that. But basically, when it's warm, transmission fluid is checked when it's warm and you've gone through the gears in it. We're talking about transmission fluid today. This is intellectually interesting to me, but not practically interesting to me. I don't think I'm going to change my transmission fluid, but I love learning new things. So that's why I'm excited about this topic. If you have a question about your transmission fluid, or if you just have a question that you want Allison to help you with your car that you have right now, our number is one 877 Six seven two seven four six four. You could also send us an email, auto at mpbonline.org. Hang on, John, um, who's uh, a caller who uh, we've got waiting. So, Allison, take us through if someone were going to change their transmission fluid or they wanted to learn how give us a little condensed how do you how do you do that so what i do i like to buy it from the dealership so you know for sure you're getting the right transmission fluid because there's so many out there you can get it from the auto parts store if you're a little bit comfortable with dealing with that because they do have universal fluids that cover a different a lot of different kinds um that'll work too but i like to go to the dealership just as a as a to keep out any any chance of getting the wrong fluid um so they're going to give you three to four, three to five quarts. That's usually a drain and fill is somewhere up in there. Now, the measurement that they give you, don't go just by that. What I like to do is take a measurement bucket that has quartz on it, and when I drain the fluid out of there, get under your car, find your transmission pan, drain your fluid out of there. On that drain plug, there's a little magnet, and you want to wipe that that uh, stuff off of there. Um, if it has that kind of drain plug, it'll have the little bits of metal that have gotten on there. But drain it into the quart bucket, measure it how many quarts came out, put that many quarts back in. And then warm your car up, drive it, and and then measure your dipstick. Get on your dipstick, look at it, and make sure your level's correct and go from there. And you'll add it. Some of them you add it. You can add it from the dipstick tube slowly. Or some of them, with the ones that don't have dipstick, they will have a place above the drain plug where you'll take that little plug off of there and you'll push it in through. I use a little handheld pump from Ace Hardware. It wasn't $15. And um, I use the heck out of that thing and pump it in there. And usually at that point, it's, it's till you can put your pinky in there and fill it at the drain hole. And then then check it of course always double check um on the ones that you can't check with a dipstick that is where you put your pinky in there in that little hole make sure that you can fill some transmission fluid up to that that hole um i like to push it till it comes out just weeps out just a little bit then you know you're you're good all right and that's it it. You know, it sounds interesting. I was with you up until the you get under your car. Yeah. I, when I was a teenager, I would do that. Yeah. I helped my dad with his yeah. car lots. Yeah. And climbing under the car, being upside down uh, under the dashboard. Yeah. I, I was A-OK with that. Uh, yeah. Now I need to hire a teenager to do that for me. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the phones. John, thanks for calling in to AutoCorrect. Uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. John, we appreciate you calling in. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. What I have is I have a 2000 Buick LeSabre six cylinder with about 160,000 miles on it. When I check my automatic transmission levels, they're reading that they're fine. If I start it and the motor's cold, it'll go into gear and pull along just fine. But once it reaches an operating temperature, everything quits pulling. Is that going to be related towards um, the transmission itself, or is it the fluid levels are low and I'm not reading it right? What could that possibly lead to? 
What's probably happened is the fluid hasn't been changed on your regular intervals. And for everyone listening, this this is what happens when you don't change the transmission fluid. What happens is it builds up particles in there, and it stops up your filters, and it can't put the pressure on the clutch plates in there that it normally could. That's why transmission fluid needs change. So what happens is it can't build the pressure that it should be able to do. And then next thing you know, the, the clutches are slipping in there, and it won't stay in gear or it'll go out of gear and so that's what ends up happening so that's probably what's happened with your vehicle and that's a rebuild you'd have to get it rebuilt there's no fixing that you can do a drain and fill on your car and see if that helps do not do a flush if you have not done regular uh, changes on the fluid do not do a flush because that'll push all the particles out of there and then the clutch doesn't have anything to grab on anymore because it's gotten stuck with with particles so just a drain and fill you can try that but more than likely you're going to need a rebuild at this point that's what i needed to hear and i thank you very much and i enjoy your program thank you thank you i'm sorry to have to tell you that (laughs) john it it can be expensive i was afraid of i'd hear but i just wanted to hear a mechanic tell me that (laughs) yeah they can be expensive yep john thanks so much for calling in we appreciate you listening to autocorrect we're going to continue our discussion of transmission fluid when we come back from our break if you have a problem with your vehicle that's what allison is here for we appreciate her driving in from the boonies <laughs> as I call <laughs> to the it. big city uh, to be a part of the Way show. Brandon. Call us at 1 877 MPB Ring. That's 1 877 672 7464. You can also send us an email to auto at mpbonline.org. Is your car under recall? We'll have a list of ones that are when we come back. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. The information presented on this program is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the hosts and guests and the listening audience. Please consult an appropriate professional for guidance about your concerns. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Welcome back to AutoCorrect with Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic. I'm Liz Gill. If you can't listen to our show all the way through live, do find our podcast. And this is just to remind folks who may not know what a podcast is. That's just listening on demand. We take our show. It's recorded and it's put up there in the world and then you can listen to it whenever you want that's what that's all a podcast is and uh if you have if you're listening to this as a podcast we would love to hear what you're doing while you podcast i always find that interesting my husband has uh during its fantasy football season Mm -hmm. and he loves listening to these podcasts talk about the different players so he will especially ask to walk the dogs Uh so that he puts his headphones on and goes in and listens to podcasts it's for a half an hour. Benefit. <laughs> All right. We're talking about transmissions today, and Michelle, after we do our recalls, Michelle has a question for Allison about her transmission fluid. But here are the recalls for the week. We've got the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. The dealers need to replace the drive shaft for free. The 2020 Mini Hardtop Cooper Cooper S. The dealers need to install crash pads for free. And the 2017 17 Ford Explorer, the dealers need to install flocked tape to the exposed edge and tab on the inside side of the power seat frames for free. I think people were getting themselves cut. Oh, uh, okay. the, the metal was not safe. So you can find out if your car has a past recall by going to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration's website, NH. 
tsa.gov slash recalls, and you just put in your VIN number. And here's something I found out this week. The first ever Walmart car seat recycling event. It's taking place now. It began on Monday. It's taking place now until the end of the month in celebration of National Baby Safety Month. Customers can take their used car seats to the service desks at participating Walmarts and receive a $30 Walmart gift card that can be used in the store or online for items to buy for their baby. Wow. Because the, awesome. you know, we've, we, when we had, um, Dr. McLeod. Yes, thank you. Dr. <laughs> McLeod from Southern Remedy Kids and Teens, which comes on after this, when we had the show about uh, kids in cars. If you've ever had a, a car seat that's been in an accident, that you're not supposed to use it again, and you're also not supposed to use old car seats. So if your kid moves up, uh, you shouldn't trade. You shouldn't hand me down it to anyone. Hmm. Michelle, did you want to ask your transmission fluid question to Allison? Hi, Allison. Hello. Hi. Well, um, I remember when I first got my car and I took it to the regular oil change place, <laughs> and I was talking about the. Uh, I asked him about my transmission, and he said, "Oh no, you have a sealed transmission." And I'm like. What is that? And what does that mean? What does it mean when your transmission is sealed? Do I, I never get my transmission oil changed? I never have to worry about it getting bad or going out? Or Tell me what that means. That's a good question. Basically what that means, and, and for everyone out there listening, it just simply means it doesn't have a dipstick. On that transmission somewhere, it has the drain plug to drain out the fluid, and it has somewhere to put it back in. So that's what they mean by sealed. They don't recommend you ever replace the fluid, but like that makes no logical sense to me. At some point, you need to do trade change the fluid. There's no fluid that lasts a million miles on a car, and if it can't go to a million miles, they don't need to say that, in my opinion. What they're doing is they're using a fluid that lasts a long time, but that that makes them report a lower maintenance cost for your car. Some of these fluids, yeah, they they do technically last longer, but you still get particles in them that needs to be cleaned out. And so I I still recommend changing your fluid at fifty thousand. A lot of them, and that and it may be like Toyota with the Mercedes of your car that they recommend you um, change it if you have an off road situation or where you drive on dirty roads or if you pull. So if you change it then, then why wouldn't you change it normally is what my my thoughts are on that. So I still recommend you change it. So even though you have what will be called a sealed transmission, you still have a drain plug on there and you still have a filler plug on there. So um, another question real quick before we get to the caller. Um, they talked about changing transmissions, and I heard this with my Infinity. I think you and I talked about that. When you change a transmission fluid, you can sometimes your car will start Start slipping because it's, the, it's newer and it's clean, and it could be a problem. Some mechanics, like you said, in the mechanic world, some say, "Don't do it. Keep the sloshy, thick transmission fluid in your uh, transmission, and your car will run better." Some say, "No, you need to uh, change it." What do you say to that? And will it cause problems if you change it? That's true. If you've never changed the fluid in your car and it's over a hundred thousand miles, then it's probably too late to fool with changing it. Then what happens? happens is those particles all the, where the gears hit together they little pieces of metal come off and what they do is they stick on your clutches and that's what's keeping the pressure when it changes gears and the clutches are holding there and if you clean that out and get it brand new and take all that 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 mess out of there all those little metal particles that clutch has nothing to hang on to anymore and it's not working like it was before and it'll start slipping so if it's if that the thing about transmission fluid is you you need to do it on time and if you don't uh, or if, if your fluids start, if your, if your fluids black and you go to change it when it's got a high mileage on it, you could cause problems with it. You definitely never want to do a flush, and that may be more of what they're talking about. A drain and fill, not so much, is going to hurt it, but the 
a full transmission flush wheel and that's what you probably want to stay away from so uh, kind of keep that in mind a drain and fill is not going to take all those particles out you only end up replacing about half of the fluid that's in your car the rest of the fluid is in the torque converter and the other parts of the fluid when you do a drain and fill you're only changing half of the fluid out and that's why I recommend it at every 50,000 miles you can do it sooner if you want some people do but I wouldn't technically want to wait longer than that and that if, if you do it regular, if you do it from the start of the vehicle or if you know it's been done and you, and you do it on time, drain and fill should cover everything and keep you good. If, like like you're saying, and, and this is probably what the mechanics are talking about, a flush, if it's been, it, if it has high mileage and it's never been done and you do a flush on it, you can, you can damage your transmission. All right. Let's take an on-topic question real quick. We're going to go to Betty in Hazelhurst. Betty, thanks for calling in to AutoCorrect. Go ahead. Um, good morning. How are you? Good. Real good. All right. I have a 2014 Honda Civic with around 89,000 miles. Um, recently was told that both my transmission and brake fluid are discolored. Uh, I have only between twenty and 29,000 miles on them since it's been changed. Does this really sound like I need to have them changed again? Well, brake fluid needs to be changed every two to three years, regardless of mileage. And the transmission fluid, if it's if it was changed thirty miles, thirty thousand miles ago, you know for sure that they did that. You can check it yourself and just look at the coloration in it and see how it looks. Um, you, but you want to change it every fifty thousand on your vehicle. So if it, if it, so the, what they're basing on, they may be basing that on mileage on the brake fluid and I've, I'd have to see the brake fluid myself if it maybe they didn't actually change it before and it's still discolored or something like that it'll get it'll change from like a, a light oil color like um, canola oil color and get darkened and so fresh brake fluid is going to kind of look like canola oil um, for instance, so if it's dark and after that, maybe it is due again. And if that what that you said you had eighty, ninety thousand, six thousand, so yours may it may all be due again by now. So they may okay. be correct on that. Okay, well I will have to go out there and check that also. Um, may I ask a question about something else too? Sure, go ahead, Betty. I, I was also told that I needed to have fuel injection and throttle body service done. I'm not sure what all this is. I look back through my records because I've kept everything. I've, I've had all my work done at my dealership. Good. good. Um, so I've never had this injection and throttle body service done. What exactly is that, and should I have it done? Oh, that's, that's Allison's favorite thing, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm over here cheering. Um, so th the fuel injector service is going to clean out your whole fuel system. Where the fuel goes through the lines and where it goes through your injectors, that does gunk up just as much as you think it would. Um, any fluid going through any tube is going to gunk up at some point, so it cleans that out. I always pour fuel injector cleaner in my cars when I do maintenance jobs. I don't charge for it. I just put it in, in the tank. I charge a little bit for the part, but not for labor. But on at the dealerships, they put it on a machine that does it, and it shoves it out, and it's more intense than what just putting it in your tank will do. And then I always do a, a throttle body intake clean on cars and it does wonders for keeping it clean if you think about it all the air that's going into the engine of your car it gets dirty in there no matter what you do and it's just like ceiling fans when they spin they're picking up dirt particles and so it's like that so imagine the inside of your engine looking like a ceiling fan that's dirty and you use the intake clean and it pushes all that out and it also cleans off carb deposits. So both of those things are wonderful services. So I'm, I'm really glad that you had a mechanic that recommended it because a lot of them don't know that you need to do that kind of thing. Preventative maintenance was like maybe a two-day class <laughs> in, in college when I went, and then it's not talked about much with mechanics. Okay, so at around 90000 and I've never had that done before, it would be a good idea to have that done. A little bit past due, in my opinion, but yes. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I like if you can do it and you do that service once a year, which would be about every 20,000 miles these days for how many people drive. Or if you want to say every two years, it would be forty to 50,000 miles um, to make it easier. So whichever one's easier. But I wouldn't go further than that. I, I like seeing them done that frequently at least. Okay. All right. That, that answers my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Betty. We appreciate you calling in. Now let's go to my new friend from Gulfport. Is this you, Lori? Hi. Yes, it is. Lori, I'm so glad you're uh, from Gulfport Main Street. And Allison and I are very excited about going to the 10th annual View the Cruise that's going to be happening on October uh, 5th and 6th. Tell all of our listeners and tell me and Allison, what can we expect when we go to view, viewing the cruise in Gulfport? Well, we, we have so many wonderful things to do, but the first thing we do is shut down downtown Gulfport to allow in only those wonderful classic cars. Um, and we have added about 200 new parking spots this year because well, we're growing, and it's bigger and better every single year. We're so excited. It goes from, if you're familiar with downtown Gulfport, from 17th Street north um, over by McDonald's all the way down to Highway 90, all the way over from almost 30th Avenue, and then on the west side and on the east side to 23rd Avenue. So we've got a lot of space to put all these great cars, and they come down earlier and earlier every year. Now, Lori, um, if I've got cute shoes on and I have to park so far away, you've got a you've got a remedy for that. Is that right? I certainly do. I have. We are teaming up with CTA Coast Transit Authority, and we're running a shuttle. So we have specific spectator parking areas around the perimeter perimeter and I have I'll have a map up later this afternoon on our website where everyone can go and look at that map and download it or get copies at various places when you come into the city um, that show where the parking spaces are and where those spaces are we'll have shuttle to pick you up and bring you right into downtown Gulfport so you can keep your pretty shoes on it's also nice. going to be it's also going to be handicap accessible so that means that you'll be able to come with your wheelchair your walkers your strollers for the moms that always have two or three kids that they want to bring down but found that it's really difficult to do all that. They'll be able to come and enjoy the festival that way as well. Yay. Now, Lori, is it too late if somebody had a whoop to do car that they wanted to show off? Is it too late to sign up to uh, park your cruiser at Viewing the Cruise? Well, let me tell you about that. What we have is it's absolutely free and open to the public, and it's based on first come, first serve. So what happens is people start arriving on Saturday to come down here and park their cars in their favorite places. Um, they Sometimes they're here at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm out there at 3, um, just making sure that everything is getting ready to go, and they're out there parking their cars and talking with their friends and getting their cars shined up and ready to go. They have really some special parking places out there. <laughs> but now, and um, we Al don't register the spot. Oh, okay. But now, Allison and I, we don't have to get there at 2 a.m. <laughs> on Saturday morning. No, when I'm when does the fun start on Saturday for the, the spectators? Well, it starts at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And it's going to kick it off. We're kicking it off this year with our first ever cardboard cruiser parade. And that is for all ages. Uh, we have categories for wagons and wheelchairs and strollers and children and adults and everything in between. We're going to have a parade that they're going to walk around downtown and show off their cardboard cruisers. And then we'll have the contests and prizes after that. That's going to start at our historic depot downtown. That's going to end around 5.30, 6 o'clock, and then we'll give you a little time to run over to one of our many restaurants. We have about 15 of them downtown to grab a bite to eat, and then at 7 o'clock, our big Saturday night concert with Amanda Shaw and Rocky Doopsy Jr. will be performing free for everyone right there on 14th Street. So we really are expecting a really big crowd. 
what are you going to do when you come in to, uh, to the coast for Saturday night? Well, we've got your concert for you. Now, nice. Sunday morning, uh, bright and early, the, that's when some, some more fun starts. Tell us yeah. about that. Allison and I are going to have a tent for yeah. autocorrect. We've got some little giveaways for uh, Think Radio and for MPB. So tell us what's going to be happening on Sunday, this October 6th at well, Viewing the Cruise in Gulfport. Come by your state. I mean, come by your tent and visit. <laughs> yes. And I encourage yes. everyone to go by. I learned yeah, I can't so wait much to meet listening people. to your show, and it's just so much fun. Um, I learned things that I did. I need to know, and it's so informative. But you can even get more information by coming by your booth and, and visiting with you guys. Um, I'm excited about y'all being here. It's the first time that we've had you, and I know it's not going to be the last. But the festivities all begin around 8 o'clock, and with all of our restaurants, though, are most of our restaurants that serve breakfast will be open bright and early for everyone. So if you get there and get parked, you'll be able to go to one of five restaurants to be able to dine, for, have some breakfast, sit down and enjoy yourself. Um, by then, I'm sure you'll be really hungry. We'll have Bloody Marys. We'll have all kinds of wonderful things for people to partake in. Although those who are driving those wonderful cars aren't supposed to be drinking. So. That's right. <laughs> just, your, just your riders can enjoy the Bloody Marys. Um, we have our music starting. We have five stages, and our music starts at various levels around town, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we'll have all of that on our brochure. We'll be up on our website. Um, and then we have all the fabulous restaurants. So there's things going on. We've got oh, and the 50-50 raffle that we have going on. There's, there's a big excitement going on about it this year and we think that it's going to get up over twenty thousand dollars which will split the pot and so that's for ten dollars you might be able to walk away with about ten thousand dollars so that's pretty nice good. well Lori, that just sounds like so much fun allison and i are excited about going to viewing the cruise yeah. by gulfport main street association on saturday october 5th and then sunday october 6th we can't wait to go we'll see you you, and we hope all of our coast listeners and folks who are coming down for cruising the coast, which starts after, the, which is that next week, will come by and see us at our tent. Um, can we give you our website so people can download the brochure later this afternoon? You bet. Lori, go ahead and say it out loud, and then we also will have a link to it on this okay. show's page. Fantastic. Really simple. DowntownGulfport.com. There you go. We're going to Downtown Gulfport. Thank you so much, Lori, from Gulfport Main Street Association. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Look forward to that. I'm I'm so excited. Yeah. We're talking about transmissions today and taking your car repair questions. Evelyn, hang on. Our number is 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. You could also send us an email to our address, auto at mpbonline.org. What's an unreliable car not to buy? We'll get to that after the break. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Get your MPB car tag anytime. It doesn't even have to be up for renewal. Simply go to your county office to sign up. When you get an MPB car tag, a portion of the fee helps MPB continue to educate, inform, and entertain Mississippians. For details, visit mpbonline.org slash car tag. We'll see you on the road. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. To call the show, dial 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. Or email auto at mpbonline.org. This is MPB Think Radio, where Mississippi is our mission. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic, is our expert. I'm Liz Gill. We hope that you download our app for your smartphone, the MPB Public Media app. 
Consumer Reports has a list of vehicles that have a record of much worse than overall reliability based on subscriber responses to their auto, their annual auto survey. Today, we're going to caution you about the GMC Sierra 1500, the model years 2014, 15, and 17. Their overall worst problem category are their lights. So please consider reading up on the reliability of this car before purchasing it as a used car. Car, suggests consumer reports. Carcomplaints.com is another resource for unreliable car lists. And if you're interested in reviews of new cars, Casey Williams, he's the automotive correspondent for WFYI, a public radio station in Indianapolis. He's reviewed cars and covered the auto industry for over 25 years. His review this week is on the 2019 Ram 2500 Limited. We're talking about transmission fluid today and whatever's wrong with your car. We appreciate uh, folks who hold on through the brakes. Evelyn, thank you so much for calling into AutoCorrect. Go ahead. Hey, uh, two things. What were the two things that you like people to do all the time? Is it the intake clean that I yeah, always yeah, talk about? Yes, the, the throttle intake body intake cleaner. Throttle. And the fuel injector cleaner. Is, is that the other one? Yes. Yeah, throttle body intake. Okay. So let's talk car seats for a minute. And Liz knows me, so she knows my youngest is long out of a car seat. <laughs> but... Car seats have expiration dates on them. Yes. So you can look at that. And I think Target is also in the month of September doing something similar to what Walmart is doing in terms of turning them in. Fantastic. So you can uh, choose your pick of uh, uh, wherever you want to get them recycled. But, yes, just don't don't use them anymore if, if they're old and uh, don't hand me down them. Right. A second thing is we were in a car wreck when we had children. And what we did back then, and that's uh, 20 years ago almost, you call the manufacturer and they have a process whereby that some, some, we had two car seats. One asked us to cut off certain things and place it by the side of the road for garbage to pick up. The other asked us to send the car seat back to them so they could make sure it didn't get reused and they paid for that oh. we paid for nothing and they sent us new car seat oh that's I, lovely wow now that's you know close to 20 years old i don't know if that information is still true but if you're in a car wreck i think even a bumper hit you know where you wouldn't almost think it is a car wreck call the manufacturers and see what they will what they want you to do See, I love our listeners. I love that our listeners, that we're sharing this information. That's fantastic, Evelyn. I appreciate knowing about that. Have a good evening. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for calling in today. We're talking about... Um, Transmission Fluid. We we will have the website for the Walmart uh, car seat recycling event. And I'll also look up Target. And uh, if I find anything about Target, I'll have that on our website also. If you have a question about transmission fluid or about anything, uh, that's why Allison is here. That's why we pay her the big bucks. Ha, ha, ha. That's a joke because I'm Allison <laughs> does this as a volunteer job. Uh, her number, our number here is one eight seven seven. MPB ring. That's one eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Let's go to G from Eupora. Thanks for calling in to AutoCorrect. G, we appreciate you being on the show today. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, I tuned in just a little late this morning. You may have covered it. I'm not sure, but this is a question in reference to vehicles that have had transmission fluid in them for some time, like an older vehicle. Some mechanics will tell you if it hasn't been changed, you know, just leave it. And if you change it, it may cause more problems. So is that just wrong information or can you change that fluid at any knowledge or world of a transmission? (coughs) You can pretty much go with the go with a drain and fill on any car. 
It's the flushes that you have to be careful about the mileage on. You can only do those if they've been regularly done from the time the car was made, from the time the car was new. Drain and fill, you can pretty much do on any car at any time and get your fluid. Uh, um, it keeps your fluid more fresh. Even if it's been, if you know it's past due, you can still do it and, and freshen it up. And that's every 50,000 miles. Okay, okay. Even though that may not have been a regular maintenance over the years of the time, you can just change. But as far as flushing, it would be the problem. That's that right. Correct? And that's the okay. one that people warn you about. They, you know, they're know, they like changing your fluid out, and then it starts slipping. It's the flushes that do that because it completely replaces your fluid, and it okay. flushes it at the same time. So it's pushing out all the particles. It's, it's not like a drain and fill. A drain and fill doesn't push out the particles. It just refreshes your fluid. Okay. Okay. With well, high mileage, so you would suggest non flush to just change your fluid? Yeah, just to drain and fill. Okay. And think of it as similar to an oil change, but for your transmission. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, G. We appreciate you calling in. We're going to take our next break. We're talking about transmission fluid. We're also taking your car repair questions. Our number is one eight seven seven mpb ring one 672 7464 You can always, always send us an email, auto at mpbonline.org. We've got a treat to tell you about what happened this past weekend, and we'll tell you what's coming up. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Your old car is kind of like that hairstyle you had in high school. Really cool back in the day. But that old car is still cool when you donate it to MPB Think Radio. Go to mpbonline.org for details. Then sit back and enjoy the ride. Now that's cool. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Welcome back to AutoCorrect. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show at autocorrect.mpbonline.org. That's also where we will have links to the information that we've talked about today. We'll have uh, links to the Euro- the uh, viewing the cruise, view the cruise at Gulfport that Allison and I are going to be going to. We're going to be there on our tent will be set up for Sunday, October 6th. But uh, let's go back a couple of days. Allison, tell us about your wild trip to New Orleans. It was an awesome weekend. I got invited down to to basically come and sort of pit crew. I was there really more just to hang out, to do um, to to help out with the Porsche. Uh, uh, race group down there that is it is um, sponsored by the Settle My Case law firm that's here in, in Mississippi. It's, they're based out of Ridgeland, a group of them. And one of them is a race car driver, and he drives his Porsche, and, and they sponsor that. And that's one of their promotional networking tools, and it works really, really well. Um, I do the same thing with mine, having my race car. I got to spend time with him and find out that Settle My Case Law Firm is an amazing law firm. They fought against a... Oh, I, I guess I can't t- say all about that, but they were an amazing law firm. They're not your average one, for sure. And we got to hang out. At, I got to actually ride on the track, which which did scare me, and uh, and I'm glad that it did. Um, I was hoping so. And he was still a lot slower than he normally goes, so I just can't imagine how fast they get. I hope to get out there with them one day. But we had a great time hanging out. We did that for two days, and that was racing down at the NOLA Motorsports Park. And they had a thing that they did where they had the Wounded Warriors veterans ride along on Saturday, oh, which lovely. was really neat. And it's with the NASA race car group. They're the ones that hold the, the groups. We're not racing spaceships. NASA stands for the, the racing group down there in 
NOLA. And uh, and I think they do that nationally. But it was an amazing time. I had such a great time. And those guys that track cars are a little bit wilder than your regular autocross crew. They're, you, you take someone um, that's, that's out there to drive that fast <laughs> on a track. It was amazing. All right. Well, and we want to remind our listeners, we talked a little bit about it last week. You'll hear some more about it. We're going to the 11th annual Eurofest Classic European Auto and Motorcycle Show at the Renaissance in Ridgeland. Yes. That's October, Saturday, October 12th. Uh, We'll have a booth there. I'll be judging for my first time. And then I'll also have a little series where we get, it's called Ladies Under the Hood, and it's just showing you the different things where your dipsticks are, what your brake fluid is under the car, and we'll be doing that at one o'clock there at your fest. In, no, I think in it will two. We'll check check the, oh, was the it two, check the two calendar o'clock. when you get there. Two o'clock, and then this um, not this weekend, but the next weekend we have an autocross in Grenada. If anyone's interested, that's one of the best ones to go to. It's our last one in Grenada for this year. You don't have to have force. Air Force Base access like you do for the one in Columbus. So if you want to come out and if you just want to check it out and you're curious, you can come and ride with me. I'll be driving a 302 Boss Mustang and I'm really excited about that. All right. Well, we'll have a link to that. And uh, uh, Allison, everyone wants to know your uh, your secret tips. And we one more time, we'll say Allison suggests the throttle body cleaner and the fuel injector cleaner. Um, to go by yes. scheduled maintenance uh, every year or every other or yes. every other year. Make sure you don't skip it. All right, let's. We've got Frank and Joan. Let's get to you before the end of the hour. Frank, thanks so much for calling into AutoCorrect. Go ahead. Hey, thank you. I've got a 2011 Prius that I've had since it was new. It's got 156,000 miles on it, and on a recent road trip back from Oregon. All of a sudden, the traction control light, the brake light, and the anti-lock braking light just came on all at once for no apparent reason. And they're still on. Uh, Everything seems to be working okay, so I've kind of blown it off, but probably not a great idea. Any idea what that may be? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, all that does is it, it it's telling you it shut that system off until you find out what's wrong. It could be something as simple. On, on my Prius is a 2009 Prius. I got all that. All those lights came on, letting me know that it shut down the ABS and the traction control system until we figure out what's wrong with it. So I put it on a scan tool, and it said my wheel speed sensor on my right front passenger tire was not getting the correct signal so i pulled the tire off and i looked at it and it had come out of its bracket and rubbed on the tire and put a little hole in that sensor wire the wheel speed sensor and that's the sensor that reads for your traction control and your abs so those systems work together it could be something as simple as that basically is what i'm saying it could be more serious and be your ABS module, control module, or the ABS pump module itself. But the only way to know what your ABS codes are is you have to get the codes read, and they don't do that at auto parts store. They'll read check engine lights, but they don't read the ABS codes. It takes a little bit more expensive computer to read those. So that is one you'd have to take it to a shop and find out what it is. And hopefully, if you're lucky like me, it was something as simple as a sensor that had come out of the bracket and just rubbed on the tire. All righty. Sounds like it's something I need to do. All right. Yes. Thanks, yes. Frank. And Thank you. Uh, what I have learned, I love this. Is I feel like I'm reviewing in class. What I have learned from Allison is that sometimes if you have a warning light on, there's a problem. But sometimes there's a problem with the warning system, and you, you yes. need before you go replacing things higgledy piggledy. Test it out to see what the problem is. Yes. Excellent. All right. Last call. Let's go to Joan. Joan, thanks for calling in. We love our Alabama listeners. Go ahead. Oh, and I love your show so much. I appreciate all the advice. I have a question. I have a 2005 Honda Element, and the front headlight covers are, I guess, scarred or musky. Anyway, I want to replace those, but I'm being told I have to replace the whole unit. Do you know about that? 
Yes. Um, so what happens? The headlights is they get oxidized and they yeah. from the sun. Literally, you do not have to replace the whole unit. You can get and I and I got this recently just to get it so that I could recommend it to people to see if it was worth using. You can go to the auto parts store and the 3M company, which is a very famous company, has a little headlight restore kit and it has a little drill bit with the polisher head on it and then different. Uh, grit sandpapers and you can buff it out and and get all that oxidation off and you can make it like new again so you do not have to replace that whole headlight assembly and it's really easy to use that's good to know. I yep. really appreciate that. And that's it's that. like thirty dollars. So and and some of it you can reuse. So that's a really good system. It'll step you through it. And I actually liked it. I, I used it recently. Joan, okay, we well, did a show. We time. did a whole show on headlights that you can find on our website autocorrect.mpbonline.org. You can listen to it on the MPB Public Media app or on any podcasting platform. And Allison went through all the steps, Mm -hmm. and we talked about uh, uh, kits that were good to use and types of kits that weren't. So that'll give you a little extra information, okay? Thanks for the information. You're welcome. Thank you, Joan. We appreciate you listening. This has been a fun day. Yeah. That's good. All right. I'm excited it about our, so our trips that are coming up pretty soon. A lot's going on this this next month. October is full every weekend for me. So, Well, it's finally going to be nice enough to go out. I know. <laughs> hot, <laughs> it it stays hot, nice. hot weather. That's going to wrap us up for today for AutoCorrect. Our call screener for today was Jay White, and our board engineer is Michelle McAdoo. Team AutoCorrect. So for <laughs> Allison Walker, who you can follow on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter and Instagram as the Lady Auto Mechanic. I'm Liz Gill. Up next is our Thursday Southern Remedy Show, Kids and Teens, with Dr. Morgan McLeod. We hope you'll join us next Thursday at 10 a.m. for AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. 